go. Well, uh, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and uh, what you do? Uh, yeah, so my name's Nick. Um, I've been running Beyond Rest or started Beyond Rest five years ago. We're a group of float tank centers where we uh, basically provide these uh, facilities or temples um, that we that we build where people come in and uh, float to de-stress, reconnect to their true selves, reconnect to their purpose, um, find what they want to do within their life. Eventually, the more that you float, but to dumb it down or breaking it down, float tanks are essentially these big bubbles enclosed with uh, a thousand litres of water filled with 500 kilograms of ethanol salt that you float in. Um, and you cannot drown in, and uh, you you basically lie in there um, for an hour. Um, all external stimuli taken away, light, sound, touch, feel, um, so that you lose your body and then you're off. You know, you disconnect from that. Your central nervous system shuts down, um, and then then from there, it's not as stimulated. Sorry, um, the parasympathetic kicks in, and then that allows you to then kind of dream away and your brainwave normally in day to day is in a high beta frequency, um, busy mind and then it slows down in that theta frequency where, you know, it's found within kids, kids under seven, you can learn better. Um, and then from there you're able to kind of explore things um, a little bit deeper, kind of probably take a little bit further. I think he's um, underselling it a little bit. We're actually, Beyond Rest is probably what the second biggest float franchise in the world now. Um, it's the biggest outside of the United States. Mm. Um, we have, what, four locations in Melbourne. I think we've got, what, eight, nine Australia-wide? Eight. Eight Australia-wide now. Um, flotation therapy is just sort of meditation. We're training wheels for most people. Um, like Nick was saying, junk. essentially we, we're trying to take away all your senses and put you in a place where you're kind of left alone with yourself. And for a lot of people, that might be the first time that's happened in mm. decades, the first hour they've spent <coughs> being bored in decades and we just try and facilitate that that can be very unnerving for most mm. people you know spending an hour trapped in your own mm. in your own head and dark water is not the most uh not the most pleasant place to find yourself mm. so most of what we do is um sort of ease people into that We've got it's interesting because uh, it's there's the people i talk I'm, I'm a huge fan of floating i actually love to find out why or how you guys got into it um but there's sort of two camps. There's people that love the floats or people that just try it once and they freak out because they've spent time with themselves and they didn't like what was found. Mm. Oh, I couldn't sit still, I got bored in 10 minutes, you know, I felt claustrophobic and all this. It's like, well, actually, if you just relax, if you go three, four, five, 10, 20 times, you have a totally different experience as well. So how did you guys uh, get into the, or Nick, how did you start to open up the float? Were you a meditator? and you wanted to help people get into that realm or what was your story? Simply no, yeah, I was completely unawake. I was a mad bastard. I was a very alpha male, masculine guy trying to dominate the world. And at that time I was living over in India. Um, I had like a 400 person office just doing, um, you know, internet marketing sweatshop stuff for people in the, in the US really basically. And I was at a conference in the US, and then there was a guy at the back of this conference, and Neil Strauss, the guy with game, he was kind of there sitting around this guy as well, just like, and I didn't even know who he was, he was just always walking around with girls, and it was a bit weird. Neil Strauss, Neil Strauss, the the game, he's a small dude with the small ball headed dude. Yeah, 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 the game. The game, he wrote the book. Oh, the book, that's that's where where my mind went, but I wasn't sure whether you were talking about that. Yeah, Yeah. so that guy, so so he was there with with this guy, and this guy, call him the guy for now, and he was just there, and then at, at, the, at, at the time, there was like 4,000 people there, everyone's in love with all the speakers and that, and then he kept going up, and all the speakers kept going up to this guy, and they were like a puppy dog around him, and I'm like, hang on, what's, this is all just flipped, you know, everyone's in love with this guy, these guys have got the biggest ego chest going around, but then they're kind of like puppy dogs around this guy, and I just kept hearing him talk, you know, throughout throughout the thing, I said, hey dude, what, what's going on with you, like, what are you, what's, What's up with you? Why are you so different than everyone else? And he goes, oh, one, I'm highly neuro-linguistic programming trained, NLP, so understanding the mind. And then two, you know, I float every day. And I went, what's floating? He goes, mm. come with me, mm. you know? And um, I was so like, yeah. Life. yeah, so I kind of went down and I was a bit hungover as well. And then, you know, went down, had a float. I was 
just fit in this little tank thing, <laughs> you know. For everyone listening, Nick's not a small man. <laughs> so, <He's April> <laughs> so yeah, so just 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 fit in um, this tank and then we just float around and you know whatever. I can't really remember much about the first experience because I didn't think much of it to be brutally honest. And mm. it was probably that confronting of being by myself going, Ugh, yeah, I can't sit still in this thing. Went out party that night. And then the next day, I just was propelled to just write down a business plan for it and just thought this would be weird and just and spent all day in the hotel room just writing down the plan. Um, should have been hung over in the bed, like with the amount of, like, you know, that was the fourth or fifth night into the conference kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And it was a belter. And I was, um, yeah, and at that time, wrote it down. Always had an inclination towards kind of doing this and then began exploring a little bit more. Um, and started floating, you know, a little bit more for myself later. And then, yeah, began to kind of work out a lot of things within myself and just began to realise that this person that I was and all these things I was holding on to and this identity of just being this, you know, young... Because I was a young guy that made money online in the adult industry, porn industry, when I was 21 and made a lot of money and then was kind of the party boy in Perth at the time and just... What were you doing in the porn industry? I ran a bunch of review websites, so we reviewed thousands of different adult websites at the time and just worked in a particular niche where we ranked these websites across Google, Yahoo, MSN. Yahoo and MSN were really big engines back then Mm -hmm. and uh, we had 500,000 different keywords. So Mm -hmm. long story short, we were pretty influential pretty Mm -hmm. quickly in that industry where to a point where we used to go to all these parties in Vegas and Eminem and Naughty by Nature. Anyways, it was another lifestyle. I was a young footballer as well. And I walked away from the whole AFL. So that's thing yeah, as well. alpha male, your ego, everything you spoke about. Five minutes yeah, ago. so it was all mm. it was all around that kind of thing, and just tied to yeah, tied into that kind of thing. And then basically for me, it was just exploring myself and who I was and what I was doing and why am I doing that. And I think that the more that you're in there, the more you kind of connect into that little boy that really doesn't want to be a dick. Yeah, you know, and not tied to like being the cool person kind mm. of thing. And I think through that, you know, development, and you know, I grew as a person and began to kind of, you know, disconnect from this mask that I wore and just really began not giving a fuck yeah. about kind of what anyone else kind of thought in, in that regards and just kind of went down my path and then starting to do meditation and yoga and, and floating was a big part of that. And then it took, and I always had the plan there. So that was a few years. And then I was just like, then one day someone flipped me this Rogan video and goes, hey, is this this thing that you're talking about? Mm. And I'm like, holy shit, there's someone actually talking about this on the web now, you know? And then I was like, okay, now it's time that run me about 2010. And at that time... Still quite early. Yeah, so at that time, um, yeah, I pretty much lost everything at that side, side note, and then everything kind of bottomed out. And ultimately, I believe that all my businesses I did, like made lots of money, then lost it, made lots of money, then lost it, um, because there was no purpose. Mm. And, you know, fundamentally, I'm not like, if there's anything in life that is slightly a little bit dodgy, it doesn't work out for me. And I, I still have those little inklings to kind of like touch that thing or a bit of Facebook targeted advertising and things like that. And really, to the pure essence of it, I just don't think it kind of works for us as a brand when we begin to kind of do these these things and for myself personally that you know when it's not aligned to my purpose and authentic you know to my path that I'm going down wherever that path takes me but just you know reconnecting to that innocent kid that just wants to be you know be loved mm. and you know be around that welcoming kind of family so just and get dropping all that crap so that's about that ways of how I got into it it's so. a very very honest oh mate I'm God, that's, that was a great explanation. I really enjoyed it. Um, there's so many. How old are you now? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Mm. So you've been in for ten years. Uh, Two thousand and uh, eight. Yeah, so yeah, you've yeah. been in for ten years. Yeah. So how long did it take you? So that first float experience, um, you don't remember much of it. Did, how long did it take for you to start to, I guess, reap the not so much physiological rewards and the benefits of the experience, but more of the things you're talking about, finding your purpose, becoming more of an authentic you, this sort of thing. I think it hit the next day. Yeah. So for me, it wasn't the experience in the tank. It was just something kind of flipped for me. And then I just had this realm of just like, this is it, this is where I'm going to help. And then I went in with that energy. Mm -hmm. Because before I was just like, what is this weird thing this dude's telling me to go into that seems to get all this attention. And I was more tied to, who are you? Mm -hmm. I want your persuasion skills, Mm -hmm. you know, to like, no, I'm not going to give you that. I'll open you up, Mm -hmm. you know, to your deeper self. And, you know, for that, I think then I had the intention of feeling just, well, there's something to this. 
and then I went in hard with that. And so it might have been the second float, I was like, bang. Yeah. You know, I was just in there just exploring myself. My float's now completely different because I'm just so busy that I just like nothingness. I don't mm. want anything. I don't want to go anywhere. I just want nothing. That's all I get. Right. And so for me, that's all. That's really what I do. I don't really have those self-exploration ones at the moment because right. I'm just not in that space. Mm. So do you almost set an intention for that purpose when you go in there and be like, okay, I don't, I just want to rest? Yeah. 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 So I'll, I'll just look at the tank and just go, give me nothingness or just mm. give me this. I just want to just chill, mm. you know, that kind of thing. Whereas I think in the past where I began doing the exploration and going in and opening out, you know, to explore myself in the universe and the bigger thing and flowing through the cosmos and whatever, mm. you know, whatever that may be. Um, but just exploring myself. And I think going back to that question, it was a couple of floats in that, you know, I began questioning myself and then my relationship with my partner and, and, and everything like that as well. And you know, she wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. Mm. She didn't want to pull the pin. I didn't really just pull the pin. I just kept doing my thing, partying and all that kind of thing. And then for me, it was like, I think that was one of the most beautiful things as well. My early float experiences, being able to see the high purpose of how she came into my life and how, you know, I came into hers and then how we've actually already had the lessons within our lives. And we've actually got these lessons because I believe that people come in your life for a lesson. Mm. And once that lesson and learning is there, it's done, it's time to kind of move on. And then you both go down your paths. Thank you very much. It was Definitely. very knowing you, you know, that kind of thing. And mm. we've got our lessons. Um, and then explain that to her it was just like oh she just like looked like a change but mm. it's my kind of went I was like thank you we're done you know that, yeah. we went from like I'm in an R and for no one's really tippy toeing around it to like you know we are done mm. you know and, and I think that was it worked you know she was really grateful and from there I've got an amazing relationship with her to a point where her husband now builds our centers mm. you know, well so and mm. obviously you have a relationship with her husband now as well so yeah yeah exactly <laughs> sexual relationship <laughs> right, yeah. So um, I think it's important that we provide our listeners with some context as to what we're talking about here. So we all have obviously had um, direct experience with all the float tank years and these exploratory purposes. But can can we can we describe what what a float station experience is and then how we come about to having these I guess epiphanies within ourselves? Well, the, the, firstly, the tanks are full, at least ours. The chemists we use are magnesium sulfate in our water. Magnesium's just excellent at reducing cortisol on the body and really just sort of just relaxing the muscles and relaxing the body. Getting someone in there for the first time with no distractions, no, you can't see anything, you can't hear anything, you can't feel the water, that might be a bit unnerving for 15, 20 minutes. And as soon as you start sitting still, you'll find you get almost cocooned in that water, you'll lose sense of body very quickly, and then you sort of you end up getting stuck in your own head. And if you've got a lot going on, like if this isn't your wheelhouse at all, if you just come in straight from, you know, if you're a plumber and you walk in, you've never flowed, you've never been in a day spa environment or whatever, the first one can be a little bit bumpy. You'll usually get it towards the end, like it'll make a lot of sense right the last 15 minutes. The second time will be a completely different animal altogether once mm. the initial trepidation or weirdness is out of the way. But I, I find a lot of people, especially if they're not honest with themselves or they're not honest in their relationships or they're not honest at work, it can be a very confronting place the first time around. If you've got a lot of lies on the go, if you've got a lot of sort of, you spun a lot of webs, they become glaringly obvious in there. And that a lot of people come out very shaken up, maybe even a little bit, not angry, but you can, you can see people come out a little bit like, oh, Jesus, I've got a, I've got a lot of work to do on myself, yeah. especially the first time. Um, and for, for most people we get in, especially younger people, and that, Floating is floating f- is very popular on podcasts, and you know a lot of um, a lot of the people we get coming through a large chunk, maybe one in four, come in off Joe Rogan podcasts. Like yeah. we, it's a ton, mm. and that there's an expectation that comes along with that. Like he's floated a trillion times, mm. he's going in off his tits, yeah. and you know it's not the same beast. So you've got to manage people's expectations a little bit as well. Um, but you know, for the first. Most people will need to do two or three to really sort of get the hang of it and really start reaping the rewards. After the first time, you'll sleep better. You just will, unavoidably. And that's coming from what we put in the... That's coming from the chemistry rather than the sensory deprivation. Sure. Once you get the hang of the sensory deprivation, your shoulders allow... Your, sorry, your neck properly relaxes and your body establishes a little bit of trust that you're not going to go over backwards and that sort of thing. You end up in what's called a parasympathetic state which is where your body's got it's the opposite to a fight flight or fight response it's sort of 
you're, you're twitching yourself awake constantly. You're not sure where you are. Mm. And it really gives you a chance to apartmentalize your life. Like we get a lot of um, software developers in and they'll, they think they talk about it like it's defragging your mind like you would on a computer. Sort of allocating, okay, this needs to go over here. This is important. This isn't this. And it really opens that up and makes a really clear pathway for the rest of your days. You know what bugs you now. Like, for me personally, my, my most profound one was, I think it was fourth flip, my first one. I did I did one in Stockholm, Sweden, my very first one, which was, they, they, they use them in Sweden during winter for depression. So you'll have a lot of mm. float tanks set up with solariums and you go in and have a float, wow. have a tan and sort of mm. like a day of summer. So I did a few over there after coming off a large stint of three years partying in Cambodia and I was just an absolute mess. Mm. Um, and then I came back and I saw an ad for Beyond Rest and I wasn't really looking for work at the time. I'd made a lot of money selling drugs and stuff in drugs in Cambodia <laughs> um, <laughs> um, to backpackers and I, I wasn't really looking for work, but I'd done a float in Sweden. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. I had an interview with Nick's brother here, Ben, who's a bit of a bit of an odd dude, but a nice guy. Ended up having another couple of floats. The second one was garbage. Like I was like, okay, I guess I'll, I'll work here and sell this to sell this to idiots. And then I think it was number four for me. I had a, just a, a realization around my social media habits was I used to be so combative on Facebook and think I'll get into arguments with everyone I saw about anything I could find. I just, mm-hmm. I love it. I'd get up, I remember getting up at like 3 a.m. and uh, just so I could see if someone's replied. <laughs> and just, just so I'd quickly get a rebuttal in there before yeah. I get to sleep. Like, oh, you man. Addicted to it, absolutely mm-hmm. addicted. I had a float where I was like, what, what are we what are we doing? This is causing you so much unjust anxiety in your life and so much you just you projected so much just hate and I was being nasty to people and it was on issues I didn't really give a fuck about to begin with and we can swear on here. Yeah, for sure. Um and I, I had one in there and it just clicked. It was like a switch had been flicked. Like I can't even, I can't even pick up my phone and start an argument anymore. I, I, I see someone I disagree with and I'll type half a word and just delete it. And it's, mm. it's nearly impossible for me. It's like I've been hypnotized. And that was so profound and it freed up so much of my time not mm. arguing with like, Jesus Christ, that, that switch is just, it's just gone. It's mm. not existent there anymore. And allowing that hate to, to be removed from your life and I think sort was, of love to come in. I think a lot of it was just seeing how, how much it was affecting me. Like I took a real big step back in the tank and I was like, this is preoc- This is half of your day is spent mm. thinking about how you can be mean to people you don't know online. Like, what? What? Mm. What, are we, what are we doing here? This is ridiculous. And that, that for me was a gigantic weight off my shoulders and it's made me genuinely a happier person. That, that, was, that was the most profound, that was, that was the one for me where I was like, oh, okay, this, there's actually something going on here. Mm. And I, I'm still not a great responder for it. Like I get in there probably once a week, once every two weeks and I do it a lot for, um, I do a lot of jujitsu, so I do a lot for physical recoveries. I'm always a bit sore in my sleep and I still have a lot of breakthroughs through it, but I'm never, I've never been one to sort of just sit still and meditate and things like that. Um, but I still have all these little profound road rage was another one. It just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. It's not a thing I, I deal with. Whereas before I was ready to get out of cars and strangle people. And it's just, it's not a switch that had to be turned. It's not something I've even got to actively think about anymore. And that, that comes from sort of just getting to know yourself a bit better. You're, you're in there, you've got no one else except yourself and you really get to learn how you think, what bugs you, what doesn't bug you, where you get distracted, where you don't get distracted. And it subconsciously, it's, it allows you to sort of, like I was saying before, apartmentalize things. That road rage doesn't need to be here anymore. Mm. What are we doing? Get, get rid of that, free up space for whatever this is or free up space for more time with a girlfriend or mm. whatever it happens to be. And that's, mm. that made a huge difference and I actually got passion. It wasn't just a, a job I was doing to sort of kill time while, while I was sitting on my, mm. sitting on my nest egg. It was actually became a thing that I actively started doing. We had that emotional connection now, did not hundred percent. And I see with my staff, man, I sweep up, we pull in, I wouldn't call them stray dogs, but we, we, a lot of our staff come in right at the right, like we, we've never, at least in Korean, I've never advertised for staff. Mm-hmm. They've always just, they've come in and someone's like, I really need a job, or, you know, this is happening in my life. And we've, that's always happened organically. And you see them mature through, through mm-hmm. floating as well. And it's not, it's not a cure. You're not gonna cure anything with it, but it's a, it gives you a really good look at yourself. Yeah. A really good look. And the people that just don't like it, I can almost, when they walk through the door, I can almost tell it's like, you're, you're not going to enjoy it. You're going to have a rough time with this because yeah. you, you know exactly what's, you're not exactly what's going on in the head, but mm. you can sort of, you can see it in their body language and how antsy they are. And this isn't the first step for mm. them. You know, maybe you need to spend a few hours just sitting by yourself in silence. Mm. 
lay off the coke for a few days. Yeah, and exactly. Would come down, but and so how would how would this uh, differ? Well, why I should ask a better question? Why would someone choose a float tank mm-hmm. than just to sit down and meditate? It's, a, it's meditation with training wheels. You can put any meathead in there, and after a period of time, as long as they're sitting still, mm. all they've got to do is sit still, and it, they'll be forced into a deep meditation. There's a guy um, who makes. We've got another product we use called an Arjuna Light at, at our service, but that what he says relates to floating as well. It, it drops you into sort of a ten-year meditation practice in half an hour. You can put anyone in there; they could walk in the door and not have never heard of floating before. I'll explain it to them for 10 minutes, put them in the water. As long as they sit still and they're not moving around and fidgety, they'll be dropped into quite a deep meditative meditation, whereas that might take them 10 years of practice to get there. So you know, measured by brain frequencies with a fade away frequency. Mm-hmm. So. And there, there is science to that. Yeah, it's, measured, yeah. it's measured. And you, you, you see that with, like, if you try sitting down for an hour and doing an hour-long meditation with no practice, good luck. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, no, it's not gonna happen no I do 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening and uh, it's a new practice to me the, the 20 minute and 20 minute mm-hmm. uh, I used to just do 10 and 10 and just going for 20 minutes now is um, is a huge skill and yeah. I've been maintaining for a couple of years so are you sitting up for it yeah yeah, yeah. So that's, that's right it's, 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 it's even hard really physically on the body it is yeah. I get a lot of lower back pain from doing it mm-hmm. it's important for me especially after CrossFit yeah it's yeah. very true yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah pushing through that initial trying to meditate through that pain mm-hmm. for the first while of practice for the first six months of practice mm-hmm. it's, that's a straight up instantly you've got a distraction there you, you're instantly yeah. behind because yeah. you've got to deal with your back pain because you know just western custom don't we don't we don't squat we don't mm-hmm. sit mm-hmm. we wear shoes it's all you know it's not Mm. conducive for relaxation so I think um, you know the reasons things come about in the market is obviously because of a need and there's a niche for you, you know places like Beyond Rest and Float Tanks and it begs the question like how far away are we as a modern society from our authentic selves or how distracted are we for for you guys to become so prevalent as a, as a health and wellness centre you know oh, dude there's a there's a place in Melbourne now that's doing social media rehab that's how, that's how far we are. We've no got to way. a point where the social re- media rehab centers. I've been doing this for three years now and it's noticeably worse. Like, especially with younger kids. Like, we get a lot of um, people in exam time, like a lot of uni students. Three years ago, 100% of them would have stayed in and would have been fine. Now, there's a, a lot of these kids come out and they look like they got shell shock when they come out. Yeah. Because if you're 18 years old and you come through now, there's a really good chance that's the first hour you've sat still in your entire life. Oh, that's the that first hour. Scary. Like, just boredom isn't... You don't have to sit on the bus and look out the window anymore. You don't have to wait for your friends to get home. You're just constantly going. That patience is non-existent. Like, we have, we have kids ask if it's okay to, like, to get out and check their phones. Like, it's... What? Wow. So we, we have... I can have like especially I mean I won't it's, it's younger I won't I don't want to race too much but it's actually <laughs> younger Asian uni students yeah. mm. will come in and it's, it's it seems to sort of go in waves like that like we'll get a lot of a lot of one demographic in and they'll all tell their friends but you can, you can just hear the tanks open sometimes you hear them get out hear the phone turn on hear the phone turn off hear the tank go back down and it's like mm. Jesus Christ it's that or they'll get out and they're, they're scrambling to turn their wet hands and they're scrambling mm. to turn the phone back on just, just to make a note, we know when someone gets out because we're a little yeah. alert. Oh, so yeah. we might have walked around just to see what was going on. Yeah, yeah we, can, we can sort of we can see motion sensors yeah. and stuff like that. Um, and that, it's getting harder for, and which this service is more justified now. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's getting more difficult. We're sort of pushing back again. We've you know we've got four centers in Melbourne. What's that? Eight, sixteen. What sixteen tanks in Melbourne? I guess. It's, that's not enough. No, 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 thanks for everyone. And we, we fill up. We, we do we do really well. But you still we're sort of just um, mm-hmm. that's the tip of the iceberg. And it's getting worse. It's getting mm-hmm. substantially worse amongst the population. There's no need to be bored anymore. There's just, just not a thing. You get Wi-Fi on planes now. Like yes. Yeah. So you you've got this generation starting to come up now that are going to be the next generation of police that have no patience at all. They've never never had to sit still. Uh, politicians, lawyers, doctors, all in there. I, I see it every day how how short that attention span's gotten. How short you look at um, Netflix, for example. Like I'm a huge comedy fan, mm. and the Netflix comedy specials recently they've cut them down. They've gone from hours, then now to half an hour, then to 15 minute comedy mm. specials because they can tell from their from the analytics when people are turning them off, and it's 15 minutes. 
Do you know that everyone on the attention span for? This is something that I found so scary and fascinating, but it, uh, it makes perfect sense. You know, you have these social media platforms that have billions of dollars worth of money to throw to R, you know, R&D, and they've got these, they got the best marketers, sales strategists, you know, in the world developing these apps for us. And apparently, um, a member at our CrossFit gym, uh, Nick, um, told me this, and apparently that they figured out that the loading time it takes to open Facebook or Twitter is the exact amount it takes for a slot machine to show you the results when you actually do the slot machine. So they figured it out that like, because the dopamine kick, what, like what you and I were talking about, the dopamine kick comes from the chase and it comes from the, oh, what if I, what if I, what if I, as opposed to actually the prize winning. Mm-hmm. So they've relayed that onto social media. So when we actually get onto the feed and we see that, We've already got it, but we just want to click on all the time and click on, you know, and the notifications will be a red, the, the color red is very evolutionarily attractive towards us because it was ripe fruit. It was all these things that we like, we want more of, you know, we want to fill this ego. So, I mean, and the, the, the scary thing is like, what you're talking about with these young kids and stuff, the only reason that I'm fascinated by this sort of stuff, you know, is because there was a point in my life that I was suffering a great deal mentally and I needed to become fascinated or else I would have gone down a very, very bad rabbit hole that I'm not sure I would have been able to pull myself out of, you know? And the good thing about that was there was probably something in me, you know, probably from a younger age when I had no access to this and I had an understanding of what it was like to not be distracted pulling me to go, hey, we need to get you back into where you are, you know, but these kids growing up don't know what it's like not to be distracted, you know, boredom's no, like, exactly like you said, boredom's no such thing. Try taking a phone off, the, you know, a 12 year old, they, they don't know what to do with it. You yeah. Go, you go out to dinner anywhere in Melbourne now and half the tables are, mm, you know, all my nephews and nieces are like communicating to each other on the table with the phone <laughs> and I'm like going, it starts wow, from the like, parents, yeah. right? Because yeah. they don't want to, or in fact, they're probably overstimulated and their kids are providing more stimulation they can't deal with and just to shut the kid up, they give them a the phone and what's... It's uh, it's quite sad. But so, do you think that's going backwards at all? There's almost zero chance of pushing that tide out again, and mm-hmm. that's only come. That's only getting worse. Yeah. There's almost mm-hmm. no chance of like. There's no, never been a point where people have gone, okay, we're going to use less technology. Like, mm-hmm. this just doesn't happen. It's, mm-hmm. it's I, I wonder worse. if though. I wonder if there will come a point where, and I don't know. I've got a very biased approach because I'm just fascinated by this, and I um, I consume a lot of content related to spirituality and authenticity and all that sort of stuff, you know, but. I wonder if there's there's going to come a point where, you know, and we're getting pretty close with like the rises of mental health issues and pharmaceutical companies, and you know, uh, uh, surely we're going to reach a point where we go, holy fuck, what are we doing? There's something we're doing wrong here, you know. Like, do you feel like we're going to reach a point where people are going to start to wake up? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think I think and I'm saying on these like continue on these younger kids, the one positive they've got, they're a lot more heart based. Than what they are. When they are awakened, like I know in Perth specifically, our centres are just filled for all these kids that just hang out and float on our days off or late at night and they just literally, there's people just hovering around there all the time and just at that age where I've had you know, you know, young guys come up to me at 21, 22, 23, go, I'm done with party. Mm. I'm, I'm over that now. Mm. You know, I was like, whoa, you know, I wasn't even started at yeah. that age, you know, like, mm. and, and just hearing that, that there are, so the positive side, yes, there's some, they're messed up in these younger teens and that are probably pretty messed up as well. Mm. But you know, you talk about the indigo children and all this kind of thing, these, these kids are being born to kind of balance out the planet. So they're mm. all gonna probably have these huge problems. Mm. And just like, you know, for me personally, drug addict, sex addict, you know, freaking everything. Yeah. Um, and you know, had a lot of, you know, look in the mirror and had a lot of trepidation and issues to kind of get through that. But when you get <coughs> through that, mm. Yeah, there is light at the other tunnel. So all these kids might have all these social media meltdowns in their twenties or thirties or wherever it may be. But then, you know, they'll be they'll be quicker to kind of wake up. It takes that breakdown to to put them on a different path. Mm. If they, you know, the longer they're on that journey or that that same path with their eyes closed, the longer it is until they well, can open. Yeah, a lot of a lot of our customers come from that social media spot, though. Like we, a lot of our customers come from the same podcasting. A lot, a lot of that's the same. Like I'm constantly distracted by podcasts. Yeah. We, a, lot of, a lot of our customers come through and that's the first step they, they take. They, they'll jump in, they'll jump in a float tank and I'm like, okay, I need to, even if it's just baby steps, I just, I just need to chill off Facebook for a bit. I need to stop arguing with people online, whatever it happens to be. And it's just using floating as a sort of a jumping off point for mindfulness or spirituality as a, 
poster it's sort of being the end all be all yeah if you could get in there and you, or you have one prolific experience with yourself you know oh wait way more than my social media account yes well, we've seen we see that a ton man we see that so often especially through our staff members and the, the way they, they change and even older we've got a lot of <coughs> older customers that are very medicated um anxiety a lot of anxiety medication and things like that and they're able to reduce them right down um insomnia has been mm-hmm. a huge market for us the amount of people that don't sleep properly is ridiculous mm-hmm. and it, it's not even it's just a bit of magnesium in your skin and then some time alone and oh look you've, you've and so what do you say to people that have come into the float tank because you, the comment I made say 20 minutes ago was about you know you've got people that love it mm-hmm. um, and can sit with themselves and you've got people that can't or you, you've also got those people that go nah it was, wasn't really for me because I just slept I slept for the hour and I'm thinking that's great. That is great. You know, you were that fatigued that you know you you had, you had to sleep at twelve o'clock in the in the middle of the day. In the middle of the day. So, what would you say to people out there that are listening <clears> that have, have tried it once or twice and and have slept and haven't thought it was for them? If you've tried it once or twice and you've slept, that's a that's a great sign. That's mm. a sign that you're comfortable in there. You're comfortable being by yourself. For a lot of people that they can't sleep because they're in there and they're so so paranoid the lid's not going to open or they're you know they, they get that anxiety coming over them or they're fidgety and they move they get bored and they sit up and they check the time and think if you're able to zone out and sleep in that i've got customs that have been floating for three years that would have loved to be able to fall asleep in one of those tanks if that's not what you're looking to get out of it though it's changing up the time of day helps tremendously for a lot of people especially midday is always a good nap time we rarely get customers coming in at 9 30 a.m and sleeping like your your body's mm. rare and you go and i'll find my if i have morning floats my my thought process gets much more primal first thing in the morning mm. everything is just around food sleep sex like it's all everything that's going on is very base level whereas if i'm doing them in the afternoon i'll often zone in and out and get quite sort of trippy and psychedelic so for most if you're if you all stop floating because you're just falling asleep and you weren't getting much out of it, I'd suggest doing it first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. But for most most of the people we get coming through that sort of come in once or twice and never try it again, it's usually because they've got too much going. They've got too much on their plate. It's too confronting when they get in there and mm-hmm. you get in there. You can't sit still for an hour because you've got this on, this on, you've got meetings on afterwards, you're cheating on your wife, whatever happens. But again, there's a ton of that. Like yeah. people coming out and having these breakdowns because they're their life's in shambles mm. and this is the first time they've actually taken a step back and go, oh mm. shit, my life's in shambles. Like you're not just faking it and self-medicating and things like that around it. Mm. But most, most people that we don't see again, it's not the ones that fall asleep, <clears throat> it's the ones that can't sit still mm. is the problem. The ones that fall asleep generally will, they'll, they'll be like, Jesus, they need to sleep, mm. Jesus Christ, and then we'll see them again. That's a lot of, um, a lot of mothers and things like that, new mothers especially. We've got a lot of new mothers in um, that will zonk straight out as soon as they get in there because they haven't had a decent night's sleep in yeah, for sure. a but. And so that's the that's the newbies. And then let's go to the experience one. You mentioned about Joe Rogan being off his nuts and you just mentioned, you know, later on in the day for you, it's a bit more psychedelic. Uh, what can you experience uh, and experiment with as a more seasonal floater? Yeah, look, I've been in... Um, a lot, most of my staff as well, being a little bit high, that's pretty normal. And it, the industry as a whole in the US, dope. yeah, a little, you know, yeah. smoke half a joint, go in the tank. It's a much more introspective sort of experience mm-hmm. that way. And a lot of the industry in the US is, there's a lot of that going on. Like there's, there's centers in the US that are basically, that's what they almost revolve around. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, that float conference last year, I've never seen such a big drug culture. Really? Yeah, yeah right. that's around the float like, industry and like yeah. Duncan Trussell spoke at that yeah. and um, yeah, it was just like a huge, huge kind of drug vibe there. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, illegal, it's illegal in most states over there as well. It's you know? about to be here by the look of it. Just from the last couple of days, there's been a lot, a lot passed, it looks like by the end of the year. We should have a, should have a bit of a structure in place for it well a, a little bit of and I, I don't have any problem with any as long as you know what you're it's not your first time yeah, to smoking high you know getting high um it, it helps it helps relax the body as well if you're a little bit nervous mm. you get in there and you, you sort of melt into it it becomes <clears throat> you're very sensitive as well so anything you would um normally do in your real life if you're a big smoker or you're a big psychedelic fan cut it by down to an eighth of what you normally do you're so mm. super sensitive in that yeah. you only need one hit and you're gonna be you're gonna have your head blown off if you go in there after, you know, getting absolutely barbecued 
Again, it's going to be super confronty, super dark. Your body knows dark water is not the best spot already. Mm. Like, there's already a bit of, you know, the, the back, most guys will find the muscles in their upper back and their neck stay quite rigid the first few floats because there's an element there where your body's like, this is dark, enclosed water. We're not going to completely switch off here. Certain settings seems a bit negative. It does. Yeah, it does. But if you go in, it's, it's generally a positive experience. I've got plenty of customers that do as well. And as long as they're not making a big deal with other customers, mm. they're, exactly. they're enjoying yeah. themselves. Experience, isn't it? Yeah. But just going in even completely sober, if you've heard of like Wim Hof, yes, yeah, ice bath. So we've um, we've recently had one of his instructors do some ice baths with us at Beyond Rest in Peran and sort of go over some breathing techniques and things like that. And I've used those in the tank recently and I know some of my staff do and he has as well. Mm. And if you do normal Wim Hof breathing, just those big inhales, mm. slight exhales, you do that for 15 minutes in the tank and you are blasted. Like you are really? just you're gone. It gets mm. very trippy. You forget where you, you feel you're in a tank. I think, I think I'm at home with my dog. You come back to, you're in the tank again. It gets very disassociated. Do you do like your you cycles don't. where you hold or are you doing more like halotropic breathing, uh, breathing where you're just sort of going... <sighs> Yeah, uh, for, for the for the 10 15 minutes mm -hmm. and then yeah. one then one big hole one big exhale and then you just go back to your normal thing and you just you go it's just so sensitive in there yeah. again um i've got to try that that sounds fascinating mm -hmm. i um sorry yeah please no no so <laughs> um <laughs> yeah the time's quite mellow here man <laughs> um i had a very negative experience in the tank once um i was um I, I reckon I've floated about five or six times and um, there were issues in my life that I was um, leaning towards self-medicating with like party drugs um, you know it, I wasn't doing a lot of it like you know I wasn't going nuts but when I would take it it was to get rid of some anxiety so I'd get on the coke you know get on the speed get on the MDMA and it was good it was like a way for me to just escape escape you know and off a whim off a whim off pun, pun, off a whim um, I'd done a couple of floats and I thought I'd just jump in there after a um, um, playing footy uh, on a Sunday night and I jumped in there and I started just getting very panicky um, after about 10 minutes or so in, I really started to get quite scared when the music turned off and the light turned off and it was just complete blackness I felt like I mean my subconscious was clearly bringing something out that I just had no idea what was going on I started to get very scared very scared and I remember just like being in there and then like opening my eyes like this and I had these two like two not to get too woo woo but like these two demon figures standing over me like this like 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 that really looking at me aggressively and it could have just been whatever you know you might you know how your brain tries to make sense of things by you know, will get flickering lights and things under complete blackness but the way I took it was like holy fuck like these these demons that I've got in my brain or in my subconscious are like going to get at me if I don't get myself right, you know? And I was very, very scared. It was a very, very negative experience for me. Anyway, I came out of that, did a lot of journal writing, a lot of reflection on, upon it. It was um, not a good week, <laughs> but I, I was, I almost felt thrust into this like trapped feeling that if I ever did like a drug to escape again, then like something bad was really gonna happen from it, you know? and. I went in again on that uh, the next Sunday after a week of eating well, meditating well, trying to really focus on my authentic self. And it was one of the hardest things to do because I really had to get in there and just face mm. these literal demons, mm. literal demons, you know? And I, I, I'd always been scared of ghosts as a kid and like the whole concept of the afterlife really freaked me out. So it was not a place I wanted to be in, but it was important that I did it. And I remember going in there and panicking, like I still get a little bit just thinking about it now, you know? And um, I opened my eyes again. I remember doing exactly what I, was, what I was feeling I was supposed to do. And I remember looking around and trying to find them. You know, you know, I almost had that intention that like I wanted to come face to face with this like evil that was like in me. And I remember seeing them and they were just like here, they were just here and they were so far less significant. They were just these two little hooded figures just down there like, they were over me like this, and now they're just kind of here, you know? Mm -hmm. And I really took that as an experience of, hey, like, we're still here, you know? And I don't, I feel like they're probably not with me anymore. Like, I don't feel, I don't feel, I feel like that person's gone from me. But I just took that as an experience of, hey, like, you needed to see us, and we needed to, like, show you that, like, you were fucking around big time. And, like, I'm, it, I'm very thankful of that introspection experience because um, I don't know. I just don't know what would have happened if I had to keep going. Probably nothing sinister, but it was just weird the way I took that experience. You know, people have a lot with um, DMT if they start 
with it using DMT too often. A lot of people say they'll, they'll get there, they'll, they'll do it one day, they'll blast off into it, and they'll get there and be like, no, nah, you, you got to turn back right now. There'll be a figure there, that, and then everyone takes that step back. Yeah, from that stage. So, have you so done DMT in the tank? <laughs> I know one of our one of the staff from one of the other centres has quite a few staff in uh, Perth. Is that what they do? Why we take all mushrooms or what? That's pretty ballsy. But that is it not? Well, like the guy that introduced me took it. Sorry, uh-huh. um, the guy introduced me to ketamine. So okay, so back in the day, and this guy never took drugs or alcohol. You know, so from the actual K hole in the tank. K hole in the tank. Wow. Oh, so he would go hard and he goes, and he and he, and, yeah, and that's the way he explained it to me. And he goes, you know, I could die. And I was like, when are we doing this now? Yeah. Right, you know, like, so I just went straight into, like, not with the cave first time, but I was just so interested in, like, you can die in anyway. So I just went there as more of an adventure thing. And then like, tell, I tell us about there. the cave. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 tell us, tell us your experience, because it's, it's quite... It's fascinating. Well, I just wouldn't think, you know, I just wouldn't think to do that. I could see, you know, smoking dope and going in there. I think K would just be really scary. Well, John Lilly, who mm. invented these, he was... Huge K fan. These were started yeah. originally for like um, Navy research to try and talk to dolphins and all kinds of <gasps> nonsense. Mm. And he was shooting himself at K and doing float tanks and he'd do 12 hour sessions. He'd have like <laughs> a catch with the dolphins. What? Yeah, that's how it all started. He was dropping acid and jumping in there, and that's how it all. So wow. if you read any of his old books that we've got in our little library Shit. thing up the back there, a lot of it is going over about ketamine injections and things like that. He laid 50 dimensions that you can go into yeah. and like fully mapped it out. Yeah, he, he lost the plot of it to us. Yeah. A bit, but yeah. like I, I've never, never done K in there. When I, what did I break? I broke something. I think I, I think when I broke my eye, I got kicked in the face. Um, I took, I had oxycodone, mm-hmm. and that was horrific. That horrific, like a synthetic, and it felt synthetic. Like I mm-hmm. didn't, didn't take it intentionally to float, but I was on it for, for pain management anyway. Yes. And it was. It was this really uncomfortable, like, this needs to be out of your body. This needs to be really? out of your body. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? And I couldn't, I couldn't stay in there. I couldn't, couldn't do it anymore. Really? Yeah. Did you then get off the painkillers after that? Yeah, I mean, I, was, I didn't really need them to begin with. Okay. It's kind of, you know, taking them as they were there and it feels nice, but... Isn't that fascinating? But I suppose, it, you know, your body knows best yep. and your subconsciousness yep. doesn't come to like, hey, dude, It's getting I don't need listening you. to those little voices. Yes. And if it doesn't have to be around drugs or anything, like, um, I... In my early 20s, or when I first turned 20, I was 160 kilos, like obese, Shit. obese, like fat, fat. Wow. Um, and lost lost all that, and I still suffer from that. Like that demon stays in the back of my head. I've got, um, I let it out once a week, and we go balls to the wall, and all that sort of stuff. Is that him there or the other one? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, might, that might be him there. That demon, yeah. Yeah. What do you mean you let it out? Like, oh, that'd be binge cheat day sort of thing, like once a week. Oh, me, me right, yeah, okay. Oh, crazy. Yeah. But I, I'll often get in the tank, and that, that's something I, I still I'll deal with 100% while I'm in there. Like, you get in there, and you're like, okay, you're feeling good, Kai, you're in shape, you look good, we're going to keep this up. And I've, I've almost got a, I use it to almost listen to those voices in there, and that sort of strengthens the resolve mm. around around keeping the diet on point and staying healthy and exercising, mm. that sort of thing. It's just listening to your, when you tell yourself things, yes. whether it's in a float tank or not, it's way more powerful than someone else telling you, you need to lose weight. Okay, sure, yeah. fuck off. But when, like with, again, the social media thing, if someone told me to stop arguing with people online, no, I would have argued with them online about it. And mm. But when you hear it from yourself, it's almost like it's it's done, that's it. It's, it's fucking it's like, it's much just more scripture. Powerful. It, it totally is. You it's know, that's possible. so, fa- yeah, it is, but it is. It's so fascinating, even little things. I remember one time I went into a float tank and um, I, I, I couldn't stop saying like, look at the trees, look at the trees. Like it was just this pristine like environment to like, just this was this was the week this was the same sorry this is the same experience the weekend after the demon thing and um i went in there and it was like telling myself that you know hey like yeah you're not that bad of a person like you're okay like you just went off the mark a little, a little bit so i was like looking at and seeing these beautiful things you know and the one little tiny thing um this uh, my mate's ex girlfriend who reached out to me when she was going through a rough patch like nine months ago. She it was just a simple little Facebook message, simple little thing. Hey, like drink a little ketchup for a coffee. But at the time, my ego took over and was saying, and I just didn't respond to her because like I didn't want to, you know, deal with her and like um, you know the boys were making jokes about her and shit and like I just wanted to get in on that, you know. And uh, but it was just like this little voice that came to the left, being like, hey, reach out to the girl. 
And I just just remembered that from the thing. I was like, oh, fuck. And I gave her a message. And um, I remember her thinking, I remember she said something like, you know, what caused you to say that? You know, like, I'm, I'm so thankful you did. And I was like, I don't even know. Like, I don't know where that came from. You know, it was just some weird little thing in my head. That's just good conscious. That's, you've got a full-on operating system going on back there that you're not aware of. Mm. People that meditate, like being in a meditation, like David Packman, who's the head of Meditation Australia, he's, um, he facilitates our ice bath events. Okay. He's been meditating. You know, he, he meditated his cancer away. Um, as you do. Yeah, as you do. <laughs> he, it, well, he, he claims that you can sort of, you start getting, the more you meditate, you start being able to manipulate that back operating system a little bit, but the more you, more you sort of listen to those little voices, that intuition, but you, you need a place to actually be able to hear that. And you're not gonna, you're not gonna do that walking around with your phone, your hand or right. anything like that. You, you do it if you sit in your room and meditate all day, that you'll get that. You do that if you float regularly, you'll, you'll be able to start hearing little tidbits of that intuition coming through. And the more you listen to it, the easier it is to understand. Yes. And you kind of learn the language of it a little bit. Definitely. Um, I think that's probably the most powerful thing when you're floating, mm. floating for is just getting, reconnecting back with yourself, mm. back with what's really going on back there, not what you're sort of trying to project, project forward. And so what do they say about, let's, let's um, speak on behalf of the person that has absolutely no idea, is probably a, a massive skeptic in the psychedelic realm. Um, can you give us a bit of an explanation about what, you know, psilocybin, what DMT uh, does, and then we can kind of relate it back into the flow tank experience as well. So we're flow tank guys, mate. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> so I haven't done... Let's edit this part. <laughs> I haven't um, floated on DMT at all. I have floated on a small dose of psilocybin, of mushrooms. Yeah. Um, one of my good friends is particularly good at growing them. Um, only small dose. I can't go to bigger doses anymore. I remember I, I had a mushroom trip before I went to Cambodia with a friend. We did seven grams at my parents' place while their parents were home. Mm. It was horrific. It was yes. horrific. Like, I get goosebumps even talking about it to this day. So all my psychedelic usage now, if I do it, is very mild. Like, I'll often go out with a girlfriend for dinner and we'll both take, what, half a point each. Yeah. And it's, you don't, you barely feel it. You're just more interested in each other. Yeah. It's, it's not, That's it. I love it. And you do that in a float tank and you... you you, it just it's more introspective it's a little bit more visual but you end up sort of similar to your normal day to day on, on mushrooms you, cool. everything's just a little bit warped you take a different glance at things a different way you start looking at yourself a slightly different way I'm not I mean I've had plenty of good experience I've had plenty of terrible experience as well where I'm just I'm not comfortable enough to sit out a four hour float mm. so I've, I've only ever done the hour and I had every intention of being in there for the full trip and couldn't do any more than an hour in there um, but again I know we've got staff in Collingwood for example that are big into it they'll blast off and sit in there all night mm. wow and form conversations with yourself but so this is what I, this is what interests me right because I've had literally to the full stop, the exact same experience with you, right? With mushrooms, last thing I ever did, terrible experience, right? And then this concept of ego fascinates me as well, where it's like, okay, ego is telling you to run away from fear, and it's also telling you to be arrogant and think about you being special and all this sort of shit. Mm. So I like, at one point, I kind of like feel trapped, and I don't really feel trapped, but it's like this thing is like, okay, well, if I've got a bit of a fear or some sort of underlying thing of me not being able to experience psychedelics in that fashion is that something that I need to pursue do I have a calling for that I was wondering if you could open up on that I would wait until you actually felt compelled um, a lot of people touch that yeah it's something that you don't need to even if it's 10 years down the track you know you're in no rush to you've got so many more years to explore those realms DMT being much much shorter experience uh, I find I've always found DMT to be a much more accepting a much more pleasant it's I've never had a bad I've never even had anything close to a bad DMT trip every time they might not be powerful every time they might just be a bit of nonsense but they've never been super negative whereas I, I feel like if you do and we, we've seen this um, I've seen this with friends you do mushrooms at the wrong time in your life yeah. you're going to throw some shit on its head that doesn't need to be you know you're going you're gonna to mess up parts of your life that don't need, you're going to start picking at things that don't need to be picked at you know break it you know you ruin relationships that don't need to be ruined just because you think things are a little bit out of whack like things could just be it's good, you're not feeling particularly great doesn't mean they're they need to be changed they need to be adjusted they might just need a bit of wait, waiting or patience mm -hmm. and I find mushrooms will throw that 
out if you if you do them when they're not required or before or if you're abusing them particularly if you're doing yeah. them regularly before you know it everything in your life is loopy you're yeah. working for some weird vegan cafe and <laughs> you know you've got dreadlocks yeah it, you, but you see that a lot you see that a lot with that yeah I know Tom's just turned vegan and, and I'm growing my hair you see that a lot with backpackers you go to living in Cambodia you'll see guys come over from you know decent sort of lives in the UK whatever they've got family girlfriends whatever the, Three years later, they've been doing mushrooms in Cambodia. They don't know who they fucking are anymore. Yeah. They think they're a trance DJ. And then <laughs> in, in reality, as soon as that as soon as that lifestyle ends, as soon as you're not paying three dollars a day for your hostel yeah. bed, yeah. you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Sort of confining, you know, conforming to society's norms might not be the best thing. Well, you still need to live in, yes. a, in a real world. You mm-hmm. can't just pretend like that doesn't exist and yeah. you know, live on a beach for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. It's true. And I think that sort of psychedelics is something that you'd want to wait until you feel compelled to. There, need, there needs to be a huge calling. So yeah. as far as I'm concerned, like if you do not have a huge calling within you, you do not do it. Yeah. Because I've seen it go so far south for so many people that I know personally. Um, of where it can go so for me personally I did it I did a lot of psychedelics for a couple of years I haven't done it for six years I'd say um, and then for me you know I, you know, mushrooms ayahuasca cambo a lot of K you know I just liked anything that would kind of walk me and obviously reading the lily books I was like right okay you did that okay the no worries let's yeah. try this you know and then I went in that huge exploration phase and yeah. realised it was just me replacing a previous addiction of whatever it may have been because I've got a very addictive personality yeah to then get into this psychedelic mm-hmm. realm and let's uh, delve deeper and go, yeah, man, I'm just disassociating from your ego and you know, yeah. disconnected, but really I'm just escaping. Yeah, the way I'm just escaping from this kind of world, this existence, the emotions, and, you know, we're designed to be in these flesh puppets to basically ride through these emotions and grow as a soul, you know, we're not here to do X, Y, Z in the material world. We've got a mission while we're here to kind of open something up within. So long story short, that there are many ways that you can actually explore psychedelic realms without actually needing to take any psychedelic drugs. Yeah. You go look into the Tibetan culture and what the fuck they do up in those like Himalayan mountains mm. and the stuff that they do, like mm. levitating to like communicating with each other in mountains where they sit in a cave for their whole life and deal with no one naked, mm. freezing cold. You know, like yeah. the things that they do in the realms that are up there, if you want to look into a different world, you look into Tibet, Magic and Mysteries in Tibet, it's a good little intro book into mm-hmm. kind of what goes on in the Tibetan world, but that's just like another world of existence and where they actually, the planes they It's funny though, is, is that the actual true world of existence, you know, and then you've got to try to morph that into today's reality and... Yeah, it's true true for them yeah. in, in their kind of thing and then their kind of explorations because there is some, that that is definitely true because I've got my partner Elise she's very much on her little rights and her passengers and all that kind of thing where she's just slowly just shutting down the outside world mm. living in the middle of Pran and crazy yeah there mm. but just like going into this world of esoteric you know psychology and all this full on stuff mm. like I pick up a book I don't even understand it yeah it down, you that's because it's in Italian yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah in terms of the psychedelics just want to make that point that yes. just you need to be really called and if you just got that calling then, then so be it like and I know some really positive things it's done for people and then on the other side it's just you're just chasing the dragon a yeah. little bit too much and there's there's a fine balance within anything yes it was put here on earth for us to actually shortcut you know for some people that really need a shortcut that is so out of whack but for the most part that you know I'm beginning leading towards the side that you're able to work it out yourself without mm-hmm. actually venturing down that path without messing Mm. messing with things and if like Mother Ayahuasca you mess with Mother Ayahuasca she's going to mess with you mm. you know hard mm. you know so there's you know extremes that can happen in, in, in that example as well so just tread with caution we've had whole days where one like I, I would have been I'm a complete scared and I still am for a lot of the a lot of the sort of chakra crystal sort of stuff yeah alright sure um, and I think, but I think even when you look at the esotericists, mm. they're totally against the um, the, sh- the crystals and all that kind of thing. It's just a lot of people get lost in that wilderness. Yeah, stuff. Possible. Mm. But, I mean, I, I was a huge skeptic when I first came into it. Like, oh. none, none of that would have flown with me. And yeah. it, the longer I've been doing it, the less skeptical I am around some. Like, we've had whole days where one particular room people were claiming to have out of body experiences in. Like, everyone that floated in that room was saying they were looking at themselves from outside the tank in the corner to the point, and you're the first few people, you're like, all right, sure, yeah, yeah, uh, yes, you were, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then to the point where we had an exchange student come out, little Asian girl, barely speaks English, trying to explain it in broken 
broken English and our body experience at the end of the day, all from the same room. Wow. We've had we've had multiple energy practitioners come in and claim that there's a bit of a portal at the back of our centre that has negative energy coming through it or we've had one of our rooms was haunted for a while supposedly and we, we would have multiple different people that claim they work in those fields say the exact same thing it's found the exact same rhetoric about the energy in this room is very dark very angry we need to clear it okay sure it is the next person no dark energy we need to clear yeah. it oh okay so we'll get someone in clear it yeah. and I'm still sceptical around that stuff but I've seen it too many occurrences yeah. of it or people people that would have no no reason to claim an out-of-body experience yeah. try and explain it to me and it's like okay there's, there's there's something going there's something else going on there so I think you can replicate those psychedelic experiences in that like, mm. yeah, like I remember my old man talking about having out-of-body experiences in the 70s and mm. working on how to try to do those himself mm. and there's there's something there. Mm. And so let's talk let's talk energy and, and the reason why I say that I I pick up on a lot of energy. Mm. Uh, we had I actually had to clear this house the other night. Um, and so going into these uh, tanks, is there any practices? Do you guys sage it out? Do you guys you know get in clearers um, and then moving forward into just cleaning the energy? How about cleaning the tanks as well? Yes. on a spiritual sense an energy sense and also just a if you're not into that just also a cleanliness as well yeah so we get um, once a month I have a lady come through Janelle Green who's a kinesiologist and she'll come through and sage up do a proper proper clearing we have sage on hand that will get used most mornings and just do a basic a basic saging of the place mm. um, in the tent but we also got whether or not you're into it we've got a lot of citrine around the place we've got a lot of mm. um got the name of the black crystal we've got all over the place um and we will also use a lot of uh essential oils like I'll, I'll put essential oils in the cleaning in the cleaning products mm-hmm. to clean the inside of the tanks with as well mm-hmm. sort of shift the energy in those places not to mention there's a lot of actual real medical benefits to a lot of those essential yeah, oils yeah. like purifying things like Absolutely. that as well um and the so for energy clearing, it, it gets pretty, it gets cleared quite a few times. We've got diffusers all over the place spilling out essential oils. Eucalyptus spray does the best thing. Yeah, exactly. a lot of eucalyptus mm. as well. Is that good for... That, just, that just gets anything, neutralizes kind of any, really? any, any kind of room. But yeah, I, 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 and, and there's definitely merit to kind of like a lot of things that go down there. But I have my teacher um, and I can't mention his name, but um, yeah, pretty much he'll go in and then he'll go look at a room and someone goes, oh, this is haunted. And he goes, Nick, go in there and then just have a float and then pull down the lid. It's a crack in the lid. And you're like, oh, it's a crack in the lid. <laughs> so, and he's never been to our centre. He's never been anything. And he'll just like just tune in for where, mm. wherever he sits in the world and just like just basically goes, nah, there's nothing there and, that, and like that as well. So from that perspective, right. he'll go in and then look at certain things. I get told in one centre, so I'm like, oh, there's a problem there. And he'll just like look at it and go, nah. You know, it's this and that or whatever it may be. So, you know, there, there's a lot of perspectives on these things and there's a lot. So, like, like we've had clearers that come in and go, say, just crap. Mm. You know, and then other ones that come in and then just go, well, I use this particular bark from whatever it may be. Mm. And, you know, so there's a lot of, I've never heard so many different perspectives yeah, on things. And there's, and each center's got their own kind of, and there's nothing against Janelle. And, you know, in terms of she's been really good in terms of like what she, Mm. done around the Paran Centre just my point mm. is so many different opinions yeah are around that and so many different ways of kind of looking at things mm. and um, intent plays the biggest role in it. intent comes intent into more it. than more than what you're actually doing is if your intent's behind the saging or behind whatever you're using you've actually got some real mm. you genuinely want to yeah, yeah. you definitely want you definitely want to clear that stuff for yeah you know, going, up, going around and blowing some sage in a room and not caring exactly you know, you're just an entity if you there's an entity here you're gone yeah you're not welcome mm. piss off yeah yeah you know pretty much mm. yeah you know, exactly. in a way if that if that's the case kind of thing but um yeah it can go it can go down lots of little rabbit holes kind and of, of course and, you know in terms of people going oh that's wanted there and it's just like no, that's, and that's why i'm still so skeptical on it yeah. i've met so many charlatans yes yeah. like we get a lot of people coming in that will have these conversations with all oh, they want jobs or they want to come in and clear the place and you just talk Jesus Christ yeah. I've been doing this for six months just mm. it, it, there's a lot that whole industry that whole energy is so exploited at the moment it's so abused by so many different people mm. 
that aren't really just it's it's an easy cash grab at the moment. And there's a lot of people interested in it that aren't doing real research, or they are doing real research and they're falling into the wrong the wrong camp, or maybe it's the right camp, but it's also up in the air and it's also fragmented still. Mm-hmm. That it, if they're leading with crystal, that's always a sign. Yeah, yeah right. Really. So if someone's coming in and they're leading with crystals and everything like that, that's generally a sign mm-hmm. that then. You know, from what I've seen, I guess I've experienced enough. Did they good or not so good? Not so good. Right. So, um, and you know, why? Why is why is you because that? just because of um, the actual crystals themselves, like in terms of putting something there that's a rock, and then I'm putting my intention there, and then having that there, then that's going to create this you know energetic space around it. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of that. You talk to anyone when you kind of go to that Tibet and esoteric, like they don't do any crystals. Mm-hmm. Those dudes are like freaking astral traveling everywhere around the world mm-hmm. and all that kind of thing. There's no crystal yeah. like needed for that. There's just the nude self sitting on the ice cold, you know, on top of the Himalayas kind of thing in terms of where they go. So I kind of seen, I guess I've been around the rabbit hole now for this kind of thing for like a number of years. I'm beginning just, I don't mind the, you know, the traditional kind of like, I'm not following the whole Tibetan thing. I just, just, it's kind of topical at the moment in terms of kind of what I've just gone through. And I look at what my partner's doing with the mm. esoteric studies. And then, you know, my teacher, who's just this dude, you mm. know, like he sits in his room. I can't mention his name. I can't mention, like, he's that busy. He just, like, people just come to him around the world and whatever it may be. And then he's able to kind of dissect, you know, things. It's just, it's just real. It's normal. There's mm. no woo-woo. There's no too much. It's just like, you know, love is this. Let's break it down. It's just two things forming together. You know, it's a connected. Like, it's just so heady. Mm. But it, it's actually nice to kind of hear, you know, I'm sure Kai probably really appreciate um, even having a chat with this guy. But long story short, there's just a lot of fluff. Mm-hmm. And people get tired of the astral. Because when you look at... There's a great book, Journeys Out of the Body, Robert Munro, and he actually maps out from a scientific point of view how you actually get out of your body. So when you talk about the demons and things like that, you might be on astral level one. Kind of John Lilly went to it a little bit as well. But there's kind of like five levels, and you can actually go through those levels as well through life life between life progression where you get hypnotized and you, you can go off to the afterlife as well. I don't know if you know much about that as well, but throwing a few topics in here. Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, I just sure? love it. I'm love just it. listening. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I'll, just... I'll, just, I'll happily just have you just take over the show. <laughs> um, yeah, so in terms of that, yeah, so that's a really good drug-free thing. If actually someone's looking to actually do some trippy mm-hmm. things, you can do life between life regression. You just get hypnotized. Yeah. And you're straight in and then you're but all... But it's all about frequency, isn't it? You just yeah. get, We have to just drop our frequency into a more either suggestible frequency or a daydreaming... Uh, right. subconscious uh, frequency yeah um, and realistically that's what we do like the the float most of the benefits besides the the physical ones from the magnesium but all the other benefits are coming from lowering your brain frequency mm. down to a theta state it's all coming from taking you from that beta alpha blah, 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 just dropping it down keeping it down the more regularly you drop into that state the easier it is to drop into it the longer you can stay there if you're if you spend you know, half you it just, it just gets infinitely easier every time you get there to stay in those states and be comfortable in that sort of mellowed out, mm. spaced out sort of mm. sort of state. And with a lot of our, we get a lot of information on on brainwave states and frequencies and things. And again, a lot of it's up quite up in the air. When you start getting into the delta frequencies and the really low vibrational ones, universally they all talk about paranormal phenomenon. The mm. universe, everywhere you read, you talk about people that experience paranormal phenomenon whether it's alien abductions or seeing ghosts or things like that will be in one of these sort of delta delta states one of these really low sort of really brain frequencies and any if you you can google i think the the lowest um, deltas deltas quite deeply paranormal in our we've got the arsenal light which is I mean, I don't want to butcher it. I still don't know much about it, but basically it uses five LED lights and binaural beats. You know, binaural yeah, beats. Yeah, binaural beats, yeah. Yeah, so the, the lights um, flick in whatever frequency you're after. You sit under there for half an hour and it doesn't matter what you've had going on before. Um, if we put you under there for half an hour in theta, you're going to be in a theta state when, by the end of that half an hour. It doesn't matter how before you go into a float. Yeah, before you go into a float. Okay, yeah. But we, they, they can use them outside of, they use them outside of floating as well for meditation. They're big in like um, retreats in Thailand and things like that. But you can set that on Delta, and we've done that. We had a staff member. Isn't you know, Delta for sleep? Delta's Delta's deep sleep. That, I, yeah, that's how I think that Delta D for Delta is deep sleep. Deep sleep. Yeah. yeah. But we've had a staff. What's that guy's name? He moved to Sydney. 
anyway, he, he was using Delta for a while and he started having waking nightmares from it. Mm. He, he would be using this Delta frequency and he'd leave and he'd look in the mirror and see other things in the mirror and freak himself out and he couldn't, that was happening regularly outside of, so he was doing it so often, just day-to-day life, he'd be catching other things in his corner of his vision and freaked himself out like properly to the point he couldn't do it anymore. Mm. And that's from just being in those Delta states, waking for so long, you eventually start whether or not he was seeing real things or if he's just starting to hallucinate from it. You know, but brainwave frequency is incredibly powerful. Yeah. You, would, do you pump, I know you pump music at the start to sort of relax them and then, you know, 10 minutes in, then it sort of goes off and the light goes off as well. Have you experimented with just, you know, putting through binaural beats? We use binaural beats now. So that, that initial 10 minutes is a binaural beat track. So yeah. So it's geotones as well, time. Yeah. 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 So it's the... And that, that will run for that's very mild. Mm. Usually for vinyl beats and stuff like that, you need more than ten minutes to yeah. to really experience it. Um, but that's sort of what what the intention was. The the tracks the tanks come with um, by default are trash. They like sound like shipping lanes and jungle mm. and it's all sort of okay. So, so to, what was that thing you just mentioned? The Arjunite. Arjunite. Is that something portable that people could have at home? Yeah, they're expensive though. Um, they're, they're about three or four grand. They're, it's only a small kit and it's, it's, you know, it's not three or four grand worth of equipment. Right. For sure, but and it's almost like forced meditation. You don't do the work, it does the work for yeah, you. So it gets you to a place. So the tanks get you to that theta meditative state by taking away all your senses. Mm-hmm. The Arjunite gets there by almost overstimulating you. By, mm. You know, like you'll have some meditation in front of a candle uh, yeah. so they focus on it it gives you so much light stimulation yeah. that you're forced to focus on it and it, it'll drop you in there so we, we do both we do people come in members can use our lash light for free and I, I really only offer it to members that flow regularly at the moment just because it's such a weird piece of kit I don't if you've got like epilepsy for example you probably just catch fire you know what I mean so <laughs> what would happen um, <laughs> yeah. it's like walking on these small room pair of shoes uh, yeah and again, <laughs> Um, Where's Tommy? Yeah. <laughs> but so we'll, we'll put them under there for half an hour and mm. blast them. In the first ten minutes, you're just like, Jesus Christ, this is intense. And then usually I'll knock on the door and they'll be sort of sleep talking or grunting or like, uh, like you know, sort of. I'm good. Just let me know. Yeah. And then yeah. you sort of take them from there. They get straight into the water. They turn the light off straight away. And you, it's like starting from the middle of your float. Yeah. yeah. So you're starting dropped into it already. You don't yeah. need to spend that initial time building yourself into it. Or however, that was advocate here. Didn't they just? spend half an hour yeah. getting there. Yeah. So it's either half an hour in water without stimulation or but half an hour with. Do they get a small valley for their 60 minutes? They get, yeah, they get a 60 minutes where they start yeah. to float in fader for 60 minutes as opposed oh, to taking 20 yeah. minutes. With a time limit. So yeah. they're, they're, still, they're still in the tank for an hour. Yes. Yeah, they're just going to show up for us. And we, we do that for free. We really should be charging for it because mm. it, it's um, a lot. There's places in Thailand you go that just do Arshall Line retreats and that's all you do. You get to meditate from Arshall Lines for days on end. So what do people say about these paranormal experiences? Like, I mean, that doesn't sound very positive. <laughs> no, but for most people, I think it's pleasant. If you've ever had, if you've ever had like a out of body, I've had very mild out of body experience, and it's very pleasant. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, well, wow, look at this, look at yeah. and then uh, done. You know, and it was always very pleasant. I think for most people, it's, it's a bit of a oh mm-hmm. wow, that was. That was intense. That was oh, so you don't different. mean paranormal intense of like, I just, I just. Oh, you meant from the Delta. Yeah, stuff. seeing like shit in sleep your paralysis. Oh, I've had that yeah, twice. I, dude, I, I can't even talk about it, man. Yeah. I had a, oh, this is my favorite topic of conversation. <laughs> I had a, um, I had an ex-girlfriend once and when, That's we, enough. when we first <laughs> met her, one of her first things she ever told me was she, she's followed around by this thing, this, this guy in black follows her everywhere. I'm like, okay, whatever. Well, she was a stripper. It was all, it was all fun and games. Like, yeah, you're crazy. Um, we dated for about a year. Her friends told me about it once. And I met her parents, and her dad was like, "Have you seen me, man?" Mm, okay, this is this is all getting a bit strange. Mm. And one night we had this massive fight at New Year's Eve, like massive fight, like you know, the worst fight I've ever had with a spouse. Like we okay. got intense. I didn't get physical, but it got, got as close mm. as it could get. We went back to bed and laying in bed. I remember falling asleep and waking up and just having this thing standing, just black, standing over. I can't even. Mm. All the hairs on my body stand up, standing over the top of me, and just me being just completely frozen. Mm. If you've ever had sleep paralysis, yeah. it's terrifying. Top but actually, shot. having to figure there as well. And her coming out of the bathroom, go stop it. Gone. So you like you're okay, you're okay. And that was. So I, that was. That she was, told the man to stop it. You're yeah. kidding. She, she was aware Fuck. of something. I was like, Jesus Christ, and we broke up shortly after that. Oh, really? and that yeah that every time I've been telling that story for five years and every time 
just figure in black. But when you talk, when you Google sleep paralysis, it's always a dude in black. It is. It's always it's exactly the like same that. guy every time. Yeah. Everyone sees the same guy. You're sitting the on same here. Clothes. So what's sleep paralysis? I, well, you can't well, physically move. You no. get stuck in this position, and it's when you're in a really deep delta state, mm. and you, you you physically you're you're completely aware, like you're incredibly k-hole. Yeah. yeah, but without right. without the pleasantness, but you'll you'll feel like you're encased in iron, like you, you just can't move at all. And but you're just, awake. You're aware, and you're looking straight at this thing that <sighs> hates you. It's like this, like that. Yeah, yeah. Right in your face. Everyone Sucks. has it. Has the same dude, the same experience. It's usually around fights with someone that has this attached to them. It's usually around like negatively approaching someone that claims they've got one of these sort of protector types. There's, you know, like, there's a trillions of accounts of this. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there are so and so it's a protector of the other person, supposedly. It's mm. a very, so they call, they call like a slender man. Yeah, right. It's the same, same vein. And it's, that again, super skeptical, but that happened and I can't. She saw it as well. Yeah. Mm. That, that was, that was the uh, part in that story that really like, I found it quite fascinating when she came in and said, stop it. Yeah, she was, and she, and then she broke up with me after that. She was like, mm. you can't. We're done. Really? Well, because he doesn't like he doesn't want you right now. We have a massive. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll probably break. That's all me over here. Break it, break it. Oh, because of uh, it's not my fault. It's his fault. Yeah. But it was almost like that was the catalyst. Like mm. that was the like, okay, time for you to go get out. You're mm. not welcome here anymore. Oh. So, did she resonate with that entity as a spirit guide? She never. She never had any interaction with it outside of seeing it. Like, Every she'd never. Yeah. She'd uh, she'd always. But supposedly, had, <laughs> supposedly her dad. Um, saw like the one of the first memories of it was like this thing standing over a crib when she was when she was young and that and her parents would talk about it and i didn't believe and my friends would talk about saying it, i didn't believe and she would talk about it and like, okay wow Boom. bam here we are that's and fascinating that, isn't it? but so that's that's all coming from those supposedly the the scientific explanation and that's brainwave states yeah and it's just so manipulating your brainwave pants is so powerful. Like I'll use the Arch and Light now. We can set it to Alpha. Alpha being quite relaxed, alert. In the zone. In the zone. Yeah. Right? Right. And it works, for, especially for my jiu-jitsu. Yeah. I'm so much better when I've been doing that regularly and I'm focused from using that. One of our staff members, Stavros, who's been suffering from a little bit of depression recently, he's been hammering it out on Alpha and he reckons he's getting quite a lot of relief Ooh. from that. How long does the Afterglow effect last? Usually the day, okay. maybe a little bit longer. I, I think it's yeah. one of those things. If you sit in it long enough, it'll last longer. Like if you're if you're doing it every day, then you can eventually space it out once every three days, mm. and before you know it's once a week. But they'll use very similar things in like Guantanamo Bay to get information out of people by manipulating them the other way. They'll drag you into a gamma state. And gamma's like super intense, super anxiety, kind of like what I've got going on now. Yeah. Way too stimulated. They'll mm. put, you know, they'll blare death metal and put you in front of gamma for three hours, and then by the end of that, you've got so much anxiety, you don't know what to do with yourself. Shit. And we can do that with our arch light. We can mm. set it to gamma, and we've done it when we first got it. We were using gamma on it, and I'll be chewing my nails till they bled, basically. Like you, you don't know why you're anxious to your son, mm. and you can control. That's almost like controlling someone's. You know, if you controlling their mood without them even being yeah. without an actual reason to have that anxiety yeah. you just give someone anxiety by changing brainwave frequency that's insane just looking at your phone constantly all day is going to manipulate that to a degree mm. watching tv for 12 hours a day you're going to end up changing your brain frequency mm. the music you listen to will affect that mm. and if you can sort of sit in those more pleasant alpha beta theta sort of states you're going to have a much more much more pleasant life if you're mm. suffering from crippling anxiety it usually means you're sort of you're dipping into gamma quite high is it high or low, sorry? Gamma's a very high, 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 high. Yeah, very Delta high. Delta's yeah. 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 So the lower you go down, the more mellow and chill it becomes until it becomes almost too chill. Too enough. chill. And then yeah. you start seeing demons. And then, then you start <laughs> you know, waking nightmares. Yeah. And so run us through like an ideal, like what is the ideal sort of way to use float tank? So you would you would wake up and, you know, have this Arjunite. Arjuna light. Arjuna light. Arjuna is third eye. So right. Arjuna light to apparently open up his third eye. Oh, okay. That's very debatable. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. He claims it's releasing DMT when you use it. Yeah, that's right. Right, right. That's, 
very debatable. Is that a long bow, is it? <clears throat> that's, yeah, that's, he's a bit of a, the guy that creates him is a bit of a nutcase. Oh, yeah. I remember him sending us a textbook once, like, like, we needed more information on it, and he sent it to us as a video file with him dancing in the background. Really? With the text overlaid. Yeah. Oh, it, was, it was the most classic thing yeah. ever. I, yeah. I went to this workshop, and yeah. I love you, guy. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, in terms of, he had everyone around, and then he had this video of him dancing with this lady, <laughs> and, um, goes, sits at the end and goes, all right, any questions? <laughs> Yeah, I thought that explained it. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of that. But I was transporting my energy. So what's the question? Oh, I just wanted to, to wrap it back up to uh, the flow tanks and like uh, in a in an ideal world, how would people get the best out of flow tanks? Mm-hmm. Um, and then maybe some actionable steps, you know, on how to get people to your centres and yep. and getting the best out of themselves. I think consistency is the biggest thing. For, for most people, the first one, the, the first half of the first one, if they've never done it before, it can be a little bit bumpy. And sort of realizing that that's just because it's a new experience. It's, you know, your first yoga class was a mess. Your first session going to the gym, your first CrossFit lesson was, was a disaster. And your first yeah. flight, it's not, it's not something you've ever done before. And the first mm-hmm. time you do anything's awkward. And mm-hmm. it's, it's already, a, you're naked, you're in dark water. It's already a bit of an awkward experience. So just being aware that that's, that's going to happen and just being comfortable going in nervous is normal being aware that you're going to go in nervous the first time being aware that when the lights go out you're not going to be okay with it because yeah. you're in water and just being comfortable with that and coming to grips with it no caffeine is a mm-hmm. huge huge one you can't have any stimulants going on in your body when you float because it's just that's not gonna you're never gonna get there so can i just interrupt there so would pre or post workout be better and the reason is there could be a little bit of a debatable here it's like the magnesium in the water post workout is going to be great for recovery removing oxidative stress however it will take us longer because working out will create a beta frequency whereas we're mm-hmm. stimulated so would it be advisable to then float post-workout to bring you back down? Mm-hmm. But keep in mind, most people probably have caffeine as a stimulant for a pre-workout. Wait. Or... So I wouldn't come in directly after a workout. I usually, we, we've got some guys that do, but I would usually get people in like four hours, five hours, come in afterwards when you're already kind of starting to mellow out for the it's day. Straight after yoga then. Oh, yeah. yeah, especially like a yin class. Yeah, mm. you'd start off right in the zone. What about what about the, like first thing in the morning, um, and then doing your workout? I do that quite. Well, most of my floats these days are the very first thing. Like I roll out of bed, I'm still in my pajamas. I get in there, I would go back to sleep. Because you're already in, in a probably a theta state anyway. And I but I go back to sleep, and then one of the good things, and this is this goes back to the DMT thing a little bit. One of the best things I find in the morning when I float is I retain all of my dreams. So I get back in the tank and I fall back asleep. That hour of dreaming, I've got a hundred percent of it. Like I remember, so you're not waking up to a distraction. You're not yeah. waking up looking over and your partner's there. Mm. The dog's licking your face. You're waking up to zero. You're waking up to nothing. Mm. So you have nothing to take away from what you've just experienced. And the guys that have done DMT in the float tank said the same thing. One of the problems with DMT is as you're coming to, you're losing it. Like it's falling out of your hands like water. You do that in float tank, it's not the case. But same with dreaming. So you do it first thing in the morning. It's it, I start the day sort of with what I had going on in my sleep, sort of still ticking through, and that's a, that's a quite quite a good way to start. Mm. Go out, smash a couple of coffees, and mm. go at it, or whatever, yeah. whatever it is your vice is. Just, but I, I generally don't feel like I'm too motivated to work out straight after. I need a few hours again just to build, so both, both ways. Yeah. But I use it almost purely for physical, I use it almost purely for physical recovery these days, purely for like for my sleep, my neck, my lower back. It's mm. just always fried from people trying to choke me. And it, it does wonders for that sort of stuff. Mm. Just loosening up those parts, reducing it, magnesium reduces inflammation tremendously. Mm. And you've, you've seen it the last year in health and fitness, the big, the trend is reducing inflammation in the body. It turns out inflammation pretty much is the cause of every problem we have, whether that's anxiety, rheumatoid arthritis, normal arthritis, mm. insomnia is looking like it might be inflammation based now. Reducing that inflammation down, just it, you feel better when you're not bloated and swollen all the time. Definitely. And yeah. Like I'm not a flexible dude to begin with, but <laughs> my flexibility doubles if mm. I'm floating regularly. Mm. And that's just because I'm not holding that load in my hips and my knees and things like that from doing normal workouts mm. and having those DOMs there. And I think we've, I start, it's, it's a tough market to break into, but for the longest time, we've been trying to get bodybuilders in. Not because I'm a fan, but because. Firstly, just as from a as an influencer, they're mm. huge. Like people, yeah. the guys that book, the guys that follow bodybuilders worship them for some some stuff. Like every 
every fake product they put out there, every powder that they, they use. If I can get some of those guys in floating and I know how well it works for those guys, especially when they're getting down to that two, three percent body fat, mm. does wonders for keeping that inflammation out, does wonders for their sleep, their hormone fluctuation, they feel better, they're, they're not as fatigued. You know, so we started getting a lot of bodybuilders in and they're noticing their DOMs are greatly reduced from doing it. So they'll have, instead of having leg DOMs for two or three days, um, which is delayed onset muscle soreness, instead of having that for two or three days, it will be five or six hours, but it'll be way more intense. So then leg DOMs will be almost crippling for that day, but they're gone by the end of the day and they can mm. work out again. Mm. And that's- What's DOM? Um, what's it DOM? Um, DOM, like um, muscle soreness after oh, a workout, sorry. Yeah. Um, it's like below Delta pregnancy. <laughs> 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 But it's Tom with a D. It's, yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, that ball. There's, there's many different perspectives here. <laughs> but yeah, that's working well for them. And that, yeah. that's this whole industry is so new that we're still writing the book on a lot of this stuff. And like, mm-hmm. we don't have a center. We don't have anyone we can look to for the, the best advice or the best practices. We're deciding the temperatures. We're deciding the chemistries. Yeah. There's no one else. So this is all still so new and emerging. All these little niche uses, which I, I think we... we just to tip the iceberg in physical fitness with this. Yeah. The amount of athletes we get in now that do this regularly and swear by it, it's mm. huge. And you go to the US, a ton of NBA players are buying up centers now. Well, you've got. Can you buy your own float tank or is it, it has to be commercial? <laughs> yeah, you can. You just dump it probably when you work it out. It sometimes might be more expensive to run for the year than actually just go down to a float tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then yeah. you've got to have a separate room for it, so you got to have. And then, and then you've got no silence in your house because the thing will be going. True. Um, <laughs> you've got to remember having have no salt in your house. Yeah. Good luck. Like the, the salt is like having cancer. This is a big pile of cancer. It's away the walls, so your walls are falling apart and everything like that as well. So just, yeah, I think some people, there's no, there's no, 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 we're not trying to push anyone away, I guess, but it's just, we're starting to see these people that have come in and go, yeah, we're a float tank at home and don't use it anymore. Like even Brogan, mm-hmm. so yeah. I think he's going like outside of his, because he's just too much out of his house. house and he's got an old sort of one then, isn't he? Like it's an old kind of shitty oh, no, box, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, big man. No, apparently it's, um, yeah, he spent 40 grand on it. So yeah, 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 yeah it was yeah. actually pretty pretty good in that regard. Yeah. But to say, I'm just on that point with um, floating and then coming in is just, expecting nothing yeah just forget everything you hear on the rogan show forget yeah. you heard everything on this show yeah you know too no caffeine actually that was one thing mm, you yeah. gotta remember um but outside, outside of brown names that's outside of that. <laughs> <laughs> remember beyond it yeah that's right um yeah but yeah pretty much is just expecting nothing and yeah. just having a lot of expectations that's why we have on the back of our door as soon as you walk in because we began this scene in the beginning when we got the rogan Rogan art scene, as we call them, mm. and you're like, coming, oh, they're going to go crazy and speak to mm. aliens, yeah. and then you see they're just so upset walking out the door because yeah. yeah. they're just expecting so much. Yeah, yeah. expecting it. It's a very, it's a, it's a completely different experience. Your first one to your 60th, and it's not even, this, you're not doing the same thing at no. all. Mm. And trying and try, coming in the first time and expecting to have this grand psychedelic journey through your subconscious, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. Mm. You gotta work and you, you, yeah, yeah. So, so you got to work at it. Yeah, so you've got to work at it. And yeah. Today, like we were saying before, that's just not something people are willing to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bringing in hard yards and not actually working at it is a big job. Doing mm-hmm. doing fifty floats just to get good at it—it's expensive. It's a long takes a long time, but it's 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 hugely beneficial. Mm-hmm. But most people don't have the patience. Yeah, and that's so fine. Let's, let's let's talk about that to almost wrap up to give you guys a bit of a plug as well. Like, so is is yours a, a membership subscription? Is it can you just do single uh, sessions and? Because you're, uh, you know, beyond rest. You mentioned you've, you've, you're the one in uh, Paran. You've got Collingwood. If you do have a membership, I'm assuming you do. Uh, can you go to different clubs? What's the? How can people get more out of your club? Yeah. So um, we do. We main most of our repeat customers end up on memberships. Memberships starting at 65 for one float per month, 120 for two, and 220 for four. Um, all of those memberships are shareable. So if you wanted to, like a family group, get the four couples, get the two, whatever you want to do, any additionals after that will be 59. And that discount can be shared if you want to bring someone in with you as well. I'll pay, if you want to bring a friend, I'll pay 59 for theirs. Um, they, they are shareable across all our centers, at least all our Melbourne locations. One membership will sort of service, service all of those spots. And we generally, the members also get to use the Arsenal app for free as well, mm. which is a huge perk for a lot of our, a lot of our members that float regularly. They won't float if the Arsenal's not available beforehand. Mm. So it just does get you to a deeper place. Um, otherwise, other than 
that, 79 for single sessions. And we, we try, we're quite high on the price point scale in Melbourne, but that's for a reason. We don't use any chlorine in our tanks. We only use a pure magnesium. It's a much higher quality magnesium than other places. Um, our tanks are bigger. Temps. Like I heard someone the other day, I had a friend float at another centre and he goes, oh, I cooked myself, I got out early and I was really nauseous. And I was like, oh no. And I was like, where was it? Thinking it was going to be one of our centres and then when he told me, I was just like, okay. So that's a big they, problem. They well. raise the tanks and people don't lose their body. And that's the biggest problem in our industry mm. is that people um, raise the temperatures because people complain, like a girl will jump in there and move around, splash around and go, ah, it's too cold. And then jump out, or a guy or whoever it may be, and then jump out and mm. make Basically, complain. Everyone goes, "Oh, let's pick up the heat. It's too cold." Yeah. yeah. It's actually, it's a neutral temperature. You're meant to lose your body um, while you're in there, and you basically find a point, have a cold shower, lay still, don't move. Oh, you cold yeah. shower before you get in. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a hot shower. shower. Yeah. So we did. We just raised the heat. That's hated the people wanting to be warm in there. This mm-hmm. moment gets quite chilly and miserable. And it turns out that's not. It's not meant to be. You're not meant to get in there and have a warm experience. Yeah. It's meant to be a neutral. Experience. You're not meant to be able to feel the water at all. Yeah. And taking your body from being the cold shower thing works so well because if you take your body from being quite chilly into skin temperature water and heating back up, that's such a relaxing way to start the flow as opposed to going in hot and trying to bring your temperature down, which is very rough for your body mm. to do. Your body's not cooling itself down in a relaxed way where mm. it will it will it will get snuggly and warm in a relaxed way and start so keeping cold and getting to neutral. So, and we've only that's only a recent development for us. Mm. That's the last six months we've been getting people to do that. And that's is the industry so new. No mm. one knows that that's a thing. It turns out that takes ten minutes off the adjustment period for people. Yeah. Wow. It, t- it takes it takes easily ten minutes off the that's adjustment huge. period. Huge. And we're going to do that next. That time. allows us to bring our temperatures down to skin temperature without people freaking out. Yeah. And the other thing is not moving. Once you're there, you can't. Once you're comfortable, you can't be fidgeting. Even if you bump into a wall, you don't need to push off and adjust. Just yeah. sit against the wall, it's fine. You yeah. don't, if you spin around, you spin around, just don't. You'll eventually find One of the best tips I was given on my first one, because uh, I'm quite tall like you, Nick, my, my feet, like I kept floating around and bumping the walls. And I said, oh, how was it? And she's like, oh. oh, she said, how was it? And I'm like, oh, it's all right, okay. I, I didn't lose the feeling because I kept touching walls so I knew where I was at and she goes oh next time you do it just uh, when you get in there put your hands behind your head so interlace your fingers interlace your fingers put them behind your head and sort of raise your uh, raise your head a little bit so you can stretch your spine out and your neck mm-hmm. and she goes that will just balance you out I'm like Psh, yeah right so anyway ne- I went back next time just put my put pressure underneath my head just sort of elongated my spine I stayed neutral for the whole time and do it every time now perfect yeah look whatever works and for some people that's there's a body mechanics issue a lot of people's posture these days is so terrible yeah. that sitting back like this is uncomfortable so mm. we've got to have neck pillows that can support your support people's heads um we get a lot of big boys and we get a lot of athletes in now and our mm. tanks uh well our tanks are over seven foot long over four wide so we can accommodate Bigger people, so yeah, some people. That new in last night, it was six foot eight or something. Yeah. something. No so, shit. Yeah. yeah. So we had some, we had some big kids in, and um, never really have those issues anymore. You occasionally, I mean, if you're gonna bump, if you're, you know, if you're seven foot tall and 150 kilos, nothing's gonna be comfortable. <laughs> no, exactly. So yeah, you know, it, we'll make it as, uh, make it as. Target as demographic, as mate, yeah. doing well. <laughs> well, well um, guys, finally, I, God, I can talk for hours, but um. We're going to wrap it up. Um, we normally do six questions for me and six questions from my other guys, but we'll just do three from three. Because um, I'm not, I'm not guys. No, sorry, sorry. Well, do you, do you want to know? We're going to do four from four. I've got no questions. <laughs> That's true. All right, well, we'll start it off. Um, so, short answers from you, basically, Nick, short answers from you, Kai. Um, what do you like to do when you have some spare time? Spare time. Yes. Crossfit. Good man. Yeah, very good. So I find it that actually it's a perfect mindfulness practice for me yeah. personally because I'm so busy with everything that I'm doing and then I just go there and I have no chance to think about anything and just mm. out everywhere and I just find I'm so relaxed leaving it. So as a coach? Uh Tom. Yeah. Dom. Yeah, Dom. <laughs> Dom's delayed on set. <laughs> He's a good bloke, bit of a flop, but that's right. Yeah. God? Uh Jiu Jitsu. Jiu Jitsu. So yeah, yep. be, be, I'm a massive mixed martial arts fan. Like Matt like obsessed. Um, and I, it's a good way for me to get a lot of anger out. N- not that I'm an angry person, but mm. I, I think that everyone, the humans that generally have a, have a violent tendency, regardless of who you are, it's, it's there somewhere. And I, I like addressing that occasion. I like letting that out. And I find I'm just calmer, more collective. If I'm doing that regularly, I'm, yeah. I'm a better boyfriend. 
Yeah, mm. I'm just a better person. I think if we can express an emotion in a, in a productive way, I think that's always a positive, no matter what we're doing. Mm. Um, someone you look up to, Nick. Oh shit, Dom. <laughs> Killing it again. Tell Obama. Oh, nice one. Yeah. Short, uh, short reason? Uh, compassion and the way that he goes about things, his vision for the world and where it actually can be changed is very aligned to my vision with Beyond Rest and how I feel that we're tied into tapping people into their intuition and their hearts and essentially not what most people do. What we've talked about today, 5% of people may actually achieve is these kind of awakening in other realms. But for 95% of people that float, they just reconnect to what's important to them, their joy, their inner child. You know, and the more people will begin to kind of tap into that and live through their hearts, you know, the, the world will be a better place, you know, in that regard. So, and just his vision for where things can go from a business. I've actually written a, a book at the moment with him actually talking about, um, you know, way businesses can change. And it's just so actually tied to the crypto decentralized movement actually as well, which is just fascinating. So I'm kind of tying a few things together there anyways, but Dalai Lama. Yeah, <laughs> love yeah. it, love it. Oh, jeez. See, this question's been posed to me before. I don't really look up to anyone. Mm. Um, like, yeah. I, I, I really, I really don't. I, I, I despise self-help books. Um, I, I watched my parents go through that as when I was younger and mm. kind of ruin them mm. for the most part. I, I mean, I, there's definitely people I find inspirational. Um, but as, as for, like, looking up to as a whole, not not really. I, I've really... Broken. I mean, Rogan would be, I really don't want to say that. <laughs> yes. You know, but it's yeah, definitely... Yeah, you got the ball and the tattoos, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your last name is Joe. Yeah. A, lot of, um, a lot of his points, I, I mean, I disagree with him on a ton of stuff as well, but yeah. there's a lot of a lot of the independence he, he talks about, I, I really agree with, like very small government. I don't like having much oversight over me. I think everyone should be kind of left alone to do their own devices and sort of work on the results rather yeah. than the actual getting to the results. Like, yeah. Take a look at if they're doing it right. Okay, we're cool. Um, but I, I guess I would have, if I have to answer, it would have to be Rogan, which yeah. I really didn't want to say. But, <laughs> That's but right. I, I need to think on that answer a little bit for future. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is uh, a bit of a tougher question. I probably should have um, given you um, some time to think about. Okay. But uh, if you can invite three people to dinner, dead or alive, um, who would they be and why? <sighs> It's a really tough Oof. one. Oof. Uh, okay, who comes first to mind? <laughs> so Dalai Lama. Yeah. Tesla. Russell Brand. Nice. That would be Tesla. That'd, 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 Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla. Oh, yeah. no, Nikola. As in like Elon Musk, yeah. That'd be an interesting kind of mix between Russell Brand being a bit weird and yeah. kind of all that kind of thing. And in between those worlds and Dalai Lama just being compassionate and Nikola Tesla being really heady with all these crazy ideas mm. and about quantum mechanics and stuff. Do you know what's really interesting about Nikola Tesla is apparently that... Um, the pyramids, like the um, skeletal structure of the pyramids is set up in like a pretty similar fashion as to the way the, the Tesla tower was created. So a lot of people out there believe that like the pyramids in Cairo were these huge conductors of electricity. Um, they were these like, or almost like these, these foundries that like these power plants that like created electricity for the civilization um, and the people that lived in ancient Egypt because the Nile used to be a lot closer to where the um, pyramids resided and they thought that they used the Nile as an energy source to transfer that into electricity for the uh, for the people. Pretty yeah, awesome. Graham Hancock. Oh yeah, I love Graham Hancock. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah big, big fan, big fan. They're but, great. Yeah. yeah. So Have I'm you read his books? I, I've read Fingerprints of the Gods. Yeah. Um, yeah, I... It's plausible. Yeah. It's plausible. It's been going any further than it's plausible. Exactly. You start, you start getting a bit dark. His cataclysmic um, exploratory sort of theories are pretty fascinating for me. Yeah, I, but I, I also see what's happening in the medical industry now and how backwards and how wrong everyone was about that. Mm. And put that in archaeology, 100%. Yeah. Like, and you could all be fucking wrong. Absolutely. You probably are all wrong. Yeah. Are you trying to work out what happened 5,000 years ago off a couple of tablets? Nah, yeah, yeah. You guys are just making money off nonsense, and you've got no one there to correct you. But nobody Definitely. is looking at correcting you. So, I'm not a not a big archaeology fan. Um, yeah, yeah. But if inviting three people to dinner, Arnold Schwarzenegger would have to be one. I mean, yeah. the, the guy's just killed everything he's ever done. Yeah, this is phenomenal. Hicks and Gracie, who was a pioneer, pioneer, pioneer of uh, Brazilian jiu jitsu. Yeah. Is he with the? Royce Gracie yes. family. Yeah, yeah, he was kind of the older brother that should have been the Royce Gracie, right? He had disagreements and he was just a, he was also the first sort of 
masculine yogi oh, cool. in the world. Yeah, he was the first sort of yogi that kicked us. Um, other than that, it would have to be someone in diet. Someone like um, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, actually. Yeah, she's fascinating. Dr. Rhonda Patrick, yeah, her books are just... She's just so far ahead of the curve. Each what she's saying is correct. Mm. Heat yeah. therapy? Yeah. Well, the heat, the heat therapy thing is one thing, but mm. it, what she says around diet and gut biome and gut bacteria is, you know, it's, it's the opposite of what we've been told for 30 years. It's like the, the exact opposite of what you've been told for 30 mm. years. And it looks like she might be right. Like yeah. a lot of her stuff on where your thoughts are coming from, where your emotions are coming from, is actually being spawned in your gut and your gut bacteria and gut biome. And your brain is more of just an antenna for your stomach. And it looks like that might be the case. Mm. All, all of this doesn't really matter. And just keeping a healthy gut flora. And you, you see people that take probiotics and cure their depression. Mm. That's like, oh, okay. Maybe eating sugar all day and poisoning them isn't the yeah. best idea. And that's why you're depressed. What was that vein you were telling us about? Uh, so I'm all about gut. That's what I teach. Okay. So I just oh. you, you lit me up then. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a he, Vegas. He's, he's full hard right now. <laughs> yeah, full bar. <part. laughs> uh, but no, yeah, yeah. Listen, you're you're right. The gut, the gut controls everything. Um, Hi- Hippocrates said over two thousand years, all disease starts in the gut. Mm. And he's the father of modern medicine, and he says that let food be thy medicine. And there's uh, with the vagus nerve, uh, it runs from the brain to the gut. But more importantly, there's nine. Uh, nine times more receptors going up from the gut to the brain rather than down. So um, it just uh, coincides with what you just said, but I won't steal your thunder. What no, you said was great. No, it's all good, man. Mm-hmm. So, I, I think that's the way you see medicine. It's obvious the way medicine goes in the next few years. And if it doesn't, if you're talking, if you go see a doctor now and he doesn't bring that up, if you go see a doctor about your depression and he doesn't at least try and change your diet, you need to see another fucking doctor because yeah. that doesn't quack and needs to be in jail. Yeah, it's been that is so been so toxic so many people have died because of misdiagnosis from doctors or sugar industry or um, saturated fats were bad no oops like oh we just you know we gave everyone diabetes mm. oops mm. oh okay and there's no one accountable for that so I think anyone there's, there's too much money to be made mate there's, there's of companies out there the government's making money it's, we're not, not just talking small amount of money we're talking billions of dollars and pharmaceutical reps are paying for their college it's like mm. putting them through uni so it all starts from there doesn't it yeah, all these, yeah. you grow an ideology don't yeah, really right. It's a religion. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, topic for another day, I think. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, guys, f- where can we find you? Where can we find you? Beyond Rest in Paran. Um, Beyondrest.com.au. Beyondrest.com.au. That's it. Beautiful. Bit awesome. awesome. Bookings. We've got uh, four locations in Melbourne. Bookings in advance, and uh, come on down. Great. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us and well, spreading the love. For having us. It's been a pleasure. Real pleasure. Mm. Ah, it's good. That's a uh, yeah. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.